What's going on there folks? Good evening. It's the Earthmaster here on this Sunday evening, August 7th, 2022. It's about 7.30 p.m. California time. Just doing a recap of some activity around the globe. Latest quake shows a 1.1 earthquake uh, popping up there in the California region. Solar weather activity has definitely ramped up since the update. Uh, we jumped into a G2 class storm category with the KP index uh, cranking up there around the 6 KP index just a short time ago just a little bit of over an hour or so ago uh, we've seen things kind of ramp up this was kind of unexpected as uh, far as the events unfolding tonight uh, now we could see auroras up there around the higher latitudes it looks like a 60 percent chance of the auroras kicking up here um latest update Looks like uh, even these guys were kind of uh, surprised here from the solarham.net site. Uh, that escalated quickly. A moderate G2 geomagnetic storm is currently in progress thanks to a high speed solar wind stream now flowing past Earth. Uh, visible aurora will be possible at higher latitudes once it's dark outside. So we're talking about, uh, of course, up here around the uh, Canada region, possibly into Iceland. Could you imagine that being over there um, in Iceland, uh, videotaping the volcanic activity, the fountains of, of fire coming out of that fissure, and then also seeing the auroras. Basically a two-for-one reward right there. That's pretty pretty awesome to think about, uh, and I'm sure they got that uh, visual up there tonight of the auroras. Now again, this uh, kind of kicked up here earlier, unexpected G2-class storms can uh, cause some issues if they are long duration uh, for power systems and whatnot. Higher latitude power systems may experience voltage alarms uh, and long duration storms may cause transformer damage for G2 class storms. Uh, spacecraft operations and whatnot may have some issues as well. Uh, and it looks like high frequency uh, activity can be uh, affected at the higher latitudes. Uh, it looks like Aurora has been seen as low as New York and Idaho, typically 55 degrees geomagnetic latitude. Um, so yeah, I'm not for certain if it's going to get down there that low tonight uh, into the upper tier states, but you never know the uh, forecast. Make sure we got the latest update here. Kind of looks like it is stretching down into portions of Canada right now. Uh, the space weather folks here on the other page, kind of want to bring this up here. Um, they say pretty much the same thing, although they use the word unexpected solar wind stream in here. Uh, it looks like naked eye auroras can descend as far south as, uh, of course, as I mentioned, New York and Idaho. There was a pretty cool filament uh, earlier. Uh, that was actually yesterday, it looks like. Didn't see this until just uh, just now. This little, shouldn't say little because it's huge. Uh, beautiful filament kind of erupting off of the sun's surface there hurling pieces of itself into space so to speak uh, this debris will not hit earth otherwise that could spark up some further storming it is definitely away from earth um, looks like there are three more filaments arrayed across the sun's southern hemisphere and two of them are almost directly facing the planet so we'll see what happens right now uh, current speed for the uh, solar winds up there elevated about 574 km per second density as well for the protons are elevated at 20.13 so things are on the increase uh, for the activity uh, tonight how long this is going to last who knows we'll definitely have to keep an eye on it as uh like i say it just kind of came up out of the blue and uh we'll, we'll see right we'll see if we get any uh, further uh, elevated conditions. There is the coronal hole activity. We got uh, a couple of them facing us. There's the older one that I believe some of this wind streams coming from uh, that hit us tonight. Uh, I'm sure they've known about. I, I mean, a little unexpected, but uh, that coronal hole was facing us a couple days ago. So I'm sure there was stuff, solar winds flowing out of it. Kind of looks like a little happy face here. You got two eyeballs, a little nose, a little smirk. That's a little extended here. I don't know, I see all sorts of shapes and whatnot faces in this sun, so I better just move on. But either way, a couple more coronal holes around the bin here. Got to watch this weather, uh, this solar weather activity pretty closely. Far as the flare activity goes, uh, not a whole lot of potential. Only a 40% chance of seeing any type of sea flare from the current sunspots, which are not all that dynamic in terms of their complexi uh, complexity. 
So we'll watch it though. Uh, they could develop, maybe over the next couple, couple days. We'll see how that goes. Uh, earthquake activity. Let's go ahead and check out. Have we had any strange readings for earthquakes now that the uh, storm has hit? A lot of times we do see earthquakes ramping up during solar storms. In this case, not a whole lot. Uh, we haven't seen any major quakes, haven't seen any odd uh, activity at any volcanoes. Everything still stands, stands as, uh, as it was. <clears throat> we did see a little bit more activity up around the Japan region, the Izu Trench, and also down in the Papua New Guinea area. So we're still trying to get a little bit of westward migration here of the pressure, the Pacific Plate, and the uh, dynamics itself here. Working hard to possibly find a uh, larger, uh, or at least a, an area to uh, possibly put out a larger quake. Uh, it has been building up here pretty uh, nicely over the last week or so along the Izu Trench. So we will keep those uh, areas in mind. As uh, far as the West Coast activity goes, all magnitudes map here looks about the same as it did earlier. No major adjustments. Uh, to take note of, I do want to check out the West Coast trimmer map here. This is the trimmer along the Cascadia subduction zone, and that's a pretty good jump from last night. Uh, 273 epicenters of trimmer, mostly confined here to the Washington and the Vancouver Island ranges. This is kind of the northern end of the Cascadia, working its way down there. Uh, again, when we see these large scale events uh, up around 600, 800 in a day, uh, that tends to make me think that uh, we see a higher likelihood of possibly seeing the Cascadia have a quake. But uh, it's come and gone. Um, but I still think the likelihood uh, when it does happen, we're going to be in the middle of a pretty good tremor event uh, when that does happen. What day it will be, who knows? Could be tomorrow, could be tonight, could be another 100 years from now. Although I think it's the sooner there. Not going to be 100 years more. It's already been 322 years since the last major rupture along the Cascadia. A little bit of building up of time. A lot of pressure. All right, earthquake activity around the Yellowstone region. Looks like, uh, hard to tell on this map here, looks like maybe some activity here within the last hour or so at the Yellowstone uh, region outside the caldera, though. But if you look on these maps, or on these graphs here, I'm not quite seeing that activity that I'm seeing on the other seismograph. So whatever's going on, something locally uh, to that specific seismograph over here. And it could be interference looking at some of these uh, uh, those uh, readings here on this area of the uh, region. Horse Butte and Denny Creek area all shown some weird activity, but I don't think it's earthquake activity at all. Um, Let's see what we got. Not a whole lot, folks. I mean, it's normally these earthquakes will pop up and they will make themselves known. Looks like, and yeah, let's see here. Hold on a second. I was trying to click on, it looks like maybe this one right here is still picking up some activity. You see those three little spikes of earthquakes? Those right there kind of showed up over here as well, up on this station, that station. So uh, those are definitely legit earthquakes, little ones, but. Uh, overall, though, no major seismic unrest occurring at Yellowstone National Park today, tonight, or who knows what, tomorrow either. I mean, who knows when the super volcano will blow, but just know this, we would be seeing lots of signs of uh, uh, earthquakes, and I'm not talking about microquakes. We would be seeing multiple uh, fours and fives and maybe even some sixes in there as well before this thing decided to uh, even attempt to make the news as far as erupting goes but uh, right now just kind of sitting there and uh, these little microquake swarms are very common across the region all right uh, let's see what else I just want to do like I said just want to do a recap on activity again a lot of folks um, watch I'll probably jinx myself right now with this G2 storm coming in and continuing uh, we'll probably see a, a major quake who knows but a lot of times we do when we get hit with some solar flares, some big solar flares and solar weather activity, we start noticing an increase in earthquake activity and volcanic activity. But right now, I'm not seeing it. Again, how long does it take? Does it take a little bit to to enter, penetrate into the ground and or cause pressure? I don't know, but we'll uh, keep an eye on it for sure. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Have a good night. 
stay safe out there and uh, if you happen to uh, see any Aurora pictures shoot them over to me in an email we'll pop them up here on tomorrow night's show earthmastermail at gmail.com take it easy folks peace out <laughs>